I will a little bit speak about the past and the present, what we did in the past, where the bridge, and a little bit about the future plans, that what we are doing on the road. Maybe I should start with the, the product strategy or what we would like to achieve. So I usually say that the JCAM or the JCAM team is the, that's the heart of Camaxon because approximately every Camaxon application somewhere is using the R search technology. And even us who is doing the search technology is creating new products based on, on this search. And uh, our vision for this product is to be an invisible chemical backend which you can rely on. So I think the metaphor for this uh, heart is, is really just good. Just think about yourself. If, if you have a heart which is working perfectly, you're all good. You don't take care about that. That's what you accept for, the, for, for all the searching engines. You don't really see that what is behind the scene. You have nice GUI applications which is showing you the results, but you ex expect that under the scene, the chemistry should be perfect. And that's, that's our vision, to, to continue this way. And uh, I just spoke with one of our clients and I asked that, oh, what happened with the Postgres cartridge? I, I didn't hear back anything special from you. And he said, oh, yes, because it's just working. And that's what, what was, thank you, that was just for a very good information for me. That's what I expected. Okay, so when the company was founded by Chizzy, uh, back that time, we started to develop the JCAM base, and that was, I think, the second product, and we were just discussing with Chizzy that whether Marvin was the first product or JCAM base was the first product uh, for, for Camaxon. So we had Marvin, which was the graphical interface, and we have the JCAM base, which is a Java tool. Uh, how many of you are familiar with the JCAM base? Or how long should I speak about it? There is one guy only. Okay. So, <laughs> I don't go probably into the details, but that was the start when we created this Java application. And the idea behind that was that you can, through this Java library, you can communicate with any relational database to store your structures there and search on that. After that, we realized that that's not enough. We have to go to the cartridge direction. And I often hear that um, it's not totally clear what is the difference between uh, JCAM base and the, and, and the JCAM Oracle cartridge. So why do you do two products, which is one is enough? So the advantage of the cartridge, and that's that's very important. If you have if you have more data, not just chemical structure, but let's say assay data or something other which is associated with your chemical data, then you most probably want to search with that data as well. And there's a nice solution for that in relational databases. You store your structures in one table and you store the additional information in another table. You have the other essay data in another table. And then you want to search all of that. You want to combine these queries with the chemical structure with the additional non-chemical filter. And here is where the cartridge technology is coming into the picture because Oracle and every relational database engine has a so-called query optimizer. And then you have these small query parts, the chemical search part, the non-chemical search part one, and the non-chemical search part two. One is, I don't know, checking for some assay, the other is checking for activity. And then you, you wanna execute it in the fastest way. And Oracle, with this query optimizer, can figure out how to execute it, these complex query, these joint statements, such a way that you will get the results in the fastest manner. So that's the advantage of the, car, of the cartridge technology. As uh, time passed, uh, we realized that everybody is going from the internet and not using anymore the nice desktop application, but want to use web services. And what we did, it was very simple. We reused our JCAM based Java, Java library and created a web service interface on, on the top of that. It's, it's very nice. And uh, during the last three years, we came out with the Postgres cartridge. And you could, you could ask that 
hey, Wolfie, that you had JCAM base, you had Oracle cartridge. Why, why don't you do the, the JCAM process cartridge after the Oracle cartridge? Why do you do another cartridge? You have already one. We, we created the cartridge because of two reasons. One is because the Postgres itself is free. So you can have a free Postgres relational database. And then you can take the advantage of, of scaling up with that one. And the second one that, you know that this company is 20 years old. And quite a lot of things change since 20 years old. And we, we somehow want, felt like this JCAM business, yeah, it's very good but it started 20 years, years ago. So we need, to, we need to step a little bit. What we see that the data sizes are changed from, from a million structure to tens of million structure. And we wanted to follow this way that, okay, we wanna provide you a searching capability which can handle tens of million structures in a similar way how the, the, the JCAM base did in 20 years ago. So let me go a little bit. This is the current, this is the present. We have this one. And let me show a little bit um, how did we do that with the Postgres cartridge. We, we were focusing on two points. One was fast search with hit limits. So when you were doing the search, there are two occasions. One, when you want to get all the hits. The other one, which is, which is uh, for example, we use on web pages that you don't want to get all the hits, just want to get the, the first 100 hits or the first 50 hits, which you can present to your user. Because if you provide it to a, a human, then he probably won't want to go through on that hit list, which is, contains, I don't know, 10,000 structures or, or, or even more. It, it's, it's, it's a, it is a very good thing for, for, a, for a process, then you you just put it into a workflow and you digest this huge amount of structure to get a reasonable set which can be uh, checked by a human. So that was, was, was the first assumption that we want to hit very fast but for a limited set. The other was that the limited set is very good but we want to have the hits ordered, as, uh, ordered according to the similarity to the query structure. This is very important because in this ways, the results are not popping up in arbitrary order, and then you are searching for a, a specific structure, and then you get back, I don't know, a huge monster, which somewhere in the middle also have that structure. So with these two uh, features, uh, we came out with the hit as you draw feature, which means what it, it drives, that while you are drawing, you can get the hits instantaneously. And in this case, you can get an interactive usage. And then you can interactively explore your chemical space while you are drawing your structure. And I was talking a lot about this, but let's see this in action. So this you can try on the JPC demo at uh, the .chemaxon.com page, uh, which is a JPC demo page. And what you can see that you are drawing your structure, why you are drawing your structure, you get the quick hits instantaneously. So it's, you are drawing and you get back the hits. And there will be an interesting situation. Uh, I think it's gonna be, it's, this one is still okay. Then you go here, and then you don't get the hits. Oh, this is a bug in the software or what's happening? No, you don't have a hits there. And that could be also very important. If you find something, a void in the, in the chemical space, typically for a chemist, this is more interesting than you, for you are finding the structure what you are looking for. You're always more interested that you find something which you were not expecting, like, like a void in the space. So that's the latest result, and this is the present. And when I was showing this to, to users, to clients, they were all, waving, it's, it's so cool, we want it right now, it's so. But you know, Wolfie, um, it's, it's very expensive for us. Expensive, I was not speaking about the price at all. It's, I'm, I'm just showing you, you the, the feature set. Yeah, you were not speaking about the price, but you are showing something for me and Postgres and all our research and everything is an oracle. So we want and we cannot handle just 
few Postgres uh, engines, relational database engines, because we, we are not familiar with Postgres. We are doing everything for 10 years now in Oracle. So it's cool, it's super. We love to have it, but not in Postgres, but in Oracle. So that's why uh, then this is the current stage. We started to develop the similar thing on Oracle, and currently we are working on it to provide the same functionality what you could see in the Postgres cartridge in Oracle, and that's gonna be the Coral engine, the Coral, it's, go, it's going to be a new Oracle cartridge. It cannot be the old one because the technology behind that changed a lot. So it's gonna be a, a new product called Coral. And while we were, we were thinking about this one, we also realized that there are even more change in the relation database engines field. And what changed there, that somebody is saying that we wanna use the cloud. And in the cloud, you can, of course, use EC2 instances and then fire up your Oracle and your cartridge, but there is a so-called relational data store in the cloud, which is, which is already uh, providing you all the relational database engines, but you don't have to maintain it. It's simple, easy, scalable, and so on and so forth. So what we wanted, and actually what they wanted, to have a cartridge on relational data stores. So we, we started to work, this new core cartridge is going to work on RDS, card, it, on RDS instances as well. So the two cartridge is going to be actually one. The core will work on RDS instances. Okay, um, what is the next one? Ah, yes, the web services. The web services, uh, we also realized that uh, we want to provide a microservice architecture on web service layer. So till now we have one web service war file, which is a monster. And what we get back, we want to have small modules. So we are working on a modular version where you can even little small, you can scale up even small modules like conversion modules or, or I don't know, searching modules or uh, Markus enumeration modules and whatever. And then we want to have a scalability in there, in the small modules, uh, easy manageable. So we will have a web service just for the configuration settings, which, is, which will provide the configuration for all of the small modules. And this all, the three together, will provide us the cloud-ready infrastructure in, in the web service. So that is under um, construction. We are modularizing, modularizing our, our web services. And we have some other projects. And this is, this is the future. One of these projects, which is not a product and we are just thinking about what to do with this one, is the so-called project haystack. It's a project. Why is it a project haystack? What would we mean on haystack? What is, what is the metaphor here? So, a needle, we wanna find the needle in the haystack. And the needle in the haystack is, is the one that I mentioned that we have huge amount of databases out there, which is, which is, which is for example, you have Campbell here, you have Sure Campbell here, you have your own database, your own uh, database there, and another, I don't know, PubChem here, and databases, databases here and there, and they are separated. And when you are searching for it, searching for a needle somewhere, you wanna find something, or you wanna find a void space, which I was showing, what do you do? Yeah, I'm searching here, oh, I find something, searching there. We wanna put everything together, and just with one simple interface and in an interactive mode, and that's also very important. We wanna provide it in interactively. We wanna search all of these separate databases and provide back you the results. We're also considering to handle the Anamine 300K, uh, 300 million set, which is, which is a huge, huge amount of data. So, uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, this project HACEP, I, I, I will have a presentation about this one on the BioIT conference, which is going to be on the, on the next month. And I can tell you more, and I can show you what we reached in this 
uh, in this project, but currently I keep my partial results secret. So you will hopefully come to the bio IT. Uh, I didn't get any share from that. Um, finally, there are also interesting things which are emerging in the database. Databases. So we we met this graph databases, and actually it's a question for you whether you do you use somewhere graph databases? If so, then please find me on after the presentation or after or in the uh, at the end of the conference, or we will have a break. I don't think we will have another break. No, then just after the conferences, because graph databases in some sense they say that it is very good if you have you are searching for joint data, triple stores, then you have multiple information, in, for example, in, in different tables in a relational database, and we want to join all of them, then it's storing in a graph database can provide you much faster results. So we are experimenting with this. We don't know whether we go uh, and do create a product, but we will most probably create a proof of concept which is going to provide a chemical search, chemical substructure search on graph databases. So that's, the, that's our future plans. And I hope every our customer has a nice, healthy, beating heart. So I finish here. Thank you very much. I, I got enamored with Hadoop and Spark. And I bought a bunch of, or built a bunch of little baby computers at home and hooked the whole thing up. It's spectacular what happens with performance. It's, it's like incomprehensible how much faster things are. I'm just curious if you're thinking about that kind of uh, architecture sometime down the road. So yes, oh, I should come a little bit here. Yeah, we, uh, I think we created a proof of concept on Hadoop system. Uh, and what we found that uh, for, for more small molecular set that we could take the advantage of parallel computing. But well, parallel computing, for example, the atom by atom search uh, in different machines when, when we are digesting the data. So we, we have something which is working and creating a substructure search engine on a Hadoop. Actually, it's on a Spark. Yeah. A Hadoop, and we use Spark because it's an in-memory, so it's much faster. Yeah, yeah. So we did that, but finally we realized that if we go, go uh, for, for high magnitudes, like 100 million structures in the data set that with our trick, which we are using on, on, the, on the, for example, on the Postgres cartridge, we could do it better. Mm -hmm. Because it's, we, could, we, could, we could make it faster. We, we didn't uh, work on that for, for a year or something like that, so maybe that could be optimized more, but for the first slide, site, it seemed that, that it's, it's, it's working nicely on, 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 the, on the, for example, on the Postgres or whatever database. And it, it's, it is not providing enough speed up for us. Actually, the, the solution what we are going to do in, uh, uh, on the graph database is sublinear in, uh, in search time if you scale up the database. And I think we will never ever reach sublinear scaling in speed, in, in search time in, uh, in a Hadoop system because it's, it will scale up linearly at, if, if, if that's the best scenario. Yeah. So. Oh, but uh, if you're interested, we can show what we have. And I, I don't think it's right now working, but we can fire up the it's system. Really future, it's really future stuff, I think, right now. Yeah, we, we also heard that. That's why we, we started. Yeah. So, thank, thank you for you. your question. So <laughs> chemistry data is what we deal with in, in, in the industry, right? But we also deal with assay data. I've spent so much of my life dealing with greater than, less than, or that kind of data that it almost seems like, since you guys are so good at handing handling uh, abstract data types, the chemistry data, there might be something out there to handle uh, basically decorated numbers in a, in a, in a, as a new data type. Because you know, assay data, sometimes it's, it says repeat assay. And so you're always doing so much contortion at the app layer just to deal with this kind of data. The two things that are unique about pharmaceuticals are chemical compounds and decorated data. So this is just left field, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we have to do so much contortion at the app layer 
Yeah. Do greater than, less than, and... So we, we currently we don't, but as you, you are the member of the com company, we can discuss that what is your idea and how to go on that. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, so uh, I, I'm open for your for new ideas, definitely. It's just, it's just so currently, yeah. currently we handle, so you, you're right, currently we handle what the relational database can handle and can handle such types, but Maybe it, it, it's worth to consider to introduce new types and, and deal with that one. Mm. It's way back from Upjohn. The Upjohn, the original cartridge guy wrote at Upjohn, he wrote both chemical and, abs and assay Abs data right. as extensions before cartridges exist. Oh, OK. He just layered on top. It's cool. So yeah, let's discuss, let's discuss yeah. this idea. It just came to me, I'm sorry. No, it's a good idea. Let's, don't forget it, please. <laughs>